Hello and welcome to E4M webinar presented by ConvoSci. Uh, today we are going to chat about how consumer behavior in personal care and hygiene category has changed after COVID-19. So uh, I'll just quickly uh, not take the speaker's time off here and uh, introduce our panelists here. Um, and first to start with, we'll uh, talk a little bit about ConvoSci. ConvoSci is the largest and most loved platform by community builders and uh, leaders to grow and manage their communities on Facebook. More than 4,000 admins trust Conversi to grow and manage over 90 million members in their communities, which is Facebook groups. It also helps brands engage uh, to engage with existing communities and build communities from scratch. To start with, uh, I'd like to introduce Tamanna. She will be uh, the chair for the session. Tamanna, is the CEO and co-founder of Conversite. Before building Conversite, she's already built India's largest parenting community with over 200 million moms and has been acknowledged and certified by Facebook on community building. Next, we have uh, Naveen Anand, who's the Senior Director, Regional Marketing, South Asia, Oriflame. Naveen spearheads the operations in India, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, and is responsible for accelerating growth and enhancing the brand equity for Oriflame business. Uh, he has over two decades of experience in direct selling business and was instrumental in building Amway India's business. Next, we have Rajiv Dubey, head of media, Daba, uh, a marketer with extensive uh, experience in brand building, innovation, strategic media planning, and buying as head of media function at Daba. He works very closely with marketing teams, right from doing marketing mix modeling to devising annual operating plans to making a differentiated marketing strategies in discerning marketplace where every category has different set of challenges. Uh, then we have Swati Desai, who's the community leader, Bangalore, women power and uh, founder. Swati is the community uh, at Classic, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, Swati is the community leader at Bangalore Women Power, where she empowers uh, women to become uh, home entrepreneurs. She's also the founder of Classic, where she is enabling home uh, entrepreneurs to reach out to their consumers and build sustainable incomes for themselves. Uh, last but not least, we have Shashi Shekhar Mukherjee, uh, who's the head of digital marketing at Record Bank Kaiser. He is uh, one of the leading, uh, he's part of the leading teams in uh, Record Bank Kaiser. He carries deep experience in digital marketing across the top uh, creative agencies in India and also a winner of top 30 digital marketers, CMO Asia top 100 digital marketer. Over to you, Tamanna. Uh, look forward to an amazing session from here. Thank you so much, Tasme. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, super happy to be doing this session with all of you and uh, discovering a lot of new things about uh, the new age that we are all in. Uh, just a correction, Tasme. So uh, before building Conversite, when we built, uh, my background is that I'm the founder of uh, Baby Destination. There was, was my son coming to say hi, but uh, it's a network of Facebook group communities. I actually moved from New York to India to build that when I became a mother because I realized that communities is where uh, moms can get support from each other and Facebook group seems like the right platform to build it on, but not 200 million, it's 2 million members that are there in baby destination communities today. But uh, what's very exciting is that it's all communities, not just Baby Destination, but every single community is built up organically. So it's people who choose to join communities and then the admin approves. And then in that journey is where we scaled and we built Conversite, which is uh, like you said, uh, so globally, we are the first community management and monetization platform for Facebook group admins. What we really care about is tapping into insights from communities and then using those insights to power tools for both admins as well as for uh, brand marketers. Uh, so all of whatever I'll be sharing uh, today will be from what we are seeing in conversations and would love to hear from a brand's perspective, how are you seeing uh, insights when uh, you're doing other consumer immersions or research studies? And then most importantly, how are we tapping into uh, these consumers now since we are still in a pseudo lockdown mode? Um, so uh, just kicking this off by sharing my screen <clears throat> and diving into a couple of high level uh, insights dashboards that I put together to set some context. Uh, 
you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is just skincare, for example, right? And there's a lot of data here. Uh, and uh, not that we're going through everything, but just wanted to show that how uh, even skincare, <clears throat> uh, just as an overall category, has been steadily going up. Uh, what's what's very interesting is that um, uh, a lot of DIY and homemade solutions have now become uh, the talk, right? So whether it's skincare, whether it's beauty at home, uh, would love to hear. So there's there's a lot of insights that we've put together on skincare, hair care, etc. But the trend is DIY. The trend is uh, even for kids. Actually, we started seeing that a lot of products moms had started creating products at home and partly it happened because of the lockdown and partly it happened because of stockouts but would love to hear that how um, are we seeing this category emerge uh, of beauty and skincare and hair care at home uh, this is a sort of a personal hygiene dashboard right where as we can see that uh, from uh, earlier this year first quarter to now this has been constantly seeing a spike and it, is, it has stayed there. What's very, very interesting is if we look at all the products, soap is the one which is, it's continuing to go up and uh, uh, overall at a hygiene and immunity level, we've seen a 13x increase in conversations and it is staying there, right? Um, uh, and again, soap doesn't just mean soap. People say soap, but they means everything. They mean everything sort of hygiene, right? All other products. Uh, so this has been an interesting trend. Uh, sorry for the small charts, but this is very interesting that how earlier, and this was a trend last year as well, a lot of conversation used to be on infections, right? With small number of conversations around germs. Right, and now it's just changed. It's it, of course there was a massive knee-jerk rea reaction right after COVID, where germs took up pretty much eighty percent of the conversations were around germs. But it it is it is pretty much here still, and 40, 50, 45 percent conversations are now around germ. Uh, so what all of this is showing us is that there was a massive knee jerk reaction, right? Where hygiene and sanitization became the biggest topic of conversations. All we started caring about was how to protect ourselves, uh, how to protect ourselves from COVID, right? And which was reflecting in all the conversations. Uh, uh, so as I say, the new consumer who wants to be COVID proof while making all of their choices, right? How to protect myself, how to protect my family, how to make sure I'm eating the right food so that my immunity is better. Uh, and then, uh, 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 you know, if so if in case I get infected by COVID, then how I'm able to uh, fight that infection. So uh, uh, just getting into that, right, there were a lot of new product launches as well that we saw just in conversations in the last uh, uh, in, in, in the last three, four months, we've seen 50 new product and brand names emerge, right? And I first, uh, Shashi, wanted to speak to you about, um, you know, get your thoughts on this, that specifically from a sanitizer perspective, right? As the demand has absolutely exploded, leading to stockouts, uh, I was reading in a report that there's 150 new launches that have happened first with sanitizers, then uh, home hygiene, and uh, you know, again, personal care hygiene products. How are you looking at this category and where sanitizers have now become an essential commodity? How do we even differentiate, you know, continue to stay uh, market leaders? Um, just would love to hear your thoughts on this. I think that now, if, if we look at the numbers, I think that there, there are upwards of 300 brands who have entered the segment of, of hand sanitizers. And uh, clearly, yes, I mean, uh, this really opened up a lot of uh, need for this product. But yes, a lot of other brands also crept in with not too much of a brand credentials. In fact, you know, for example, like a non-alcoholic sanitizer, we saw a lot of larger players coming in, but without the without the specificness of, of uh, you know, managing COVID as a, as a, as a, as a disease. So, uh, yes, yeah, so there, there has been an uh, influx of a lot of brands. Uh, what we did look at is, uh, you know, as in when, you know, the things happened, things were happening, you know, 
people were you know you could see everywhere that people would be sort of you know talking in groups like you know what is up you know what do we do do we wash our hands five times 10 times do i use uh, you know sanitizer even after washing hands uh, people were using sanitizer on their faces on their nose just to ensure that you know what else i can do people started washing their vegetables with dettol antiseptic liquid right and now those are the things that we actually you know when we saw it and then uh, i remember you know when we looked at the data for the first time you know early march uh, and we looked at the data and we looked at that, you know, there are definitely a lot of chaos that, that is happening in the consumer's mind today. And obviously with the right reasons, because they are, there were no answers then, right? So the, the first, I think the uh, intervention that we did as a brand, uh, when we first looked at it was to, uh, I remember, uh, you know, launching a campaign is less than, I think, 36 hours after seeing the first thing of, you know, do it right with that all. Because uh, we we didn't want people to wash start washing their vegetables with Dettol. We didn't want them to sort of you know use a Dettol antiseptic liquid on a newborn baby. Now of course there are of course all these things are written on the back of the pack. So it was a very smart intervention done, which was all about you know uh, do it right with Dettol. And the larger thing was just you know uh, 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 look at look behind the pack and choose for yourself. I think that really helped us to at least. As a as a uh, you know as a as a uh, responsible uh, brand, the first thing was so that you know people don't do anything wrong, right? And then we started looking into you know how different brands are, are coming up. Then we looked into the the use cases that people have started looking into, right? There were a lot of discussions happening between mothers. You know there were there were uh, people complaining about you know hands getting dried because you know people would be actually using uh, sanitizers every 15 minutes. They are using it on their faces. There, so I, I think a, a big uh, uh, job of educating the consumer at the right point in time was critical, and that's I think uh, that was our first, uh, uh, you know, first communication as a campaign for consumers at large across all uh, you know communities and groups. Okay, great. Yeah, um, I remember that Shashi, and I think later we'll ask Swati also about her experience with that yes. because. Uh, when I was talking to her yesterday, she literally, she was like, yeah, I remember, and she was showing me conversations. But I think that was very, very responsible, right? And it also goes to say that how uh, we really care about consumers, right? We first, the first things first, I really like that, you know, even though my question is that, how do we increase market share? But you know, what you're saying is the first thing is to care about consumers and to go and tell them that, look, this is the right way to use that all or any sanitizers and take care of your skin, right? And the next thing is looking at what other products are propping up. So it's very interesting. We'll go into that, um, you know, a little bit later also, because I think that was a very, very interesting case study. Uh, uh, so uh, Rajiv, uh, I, I wanted to ask you on uh, immunity specifically, uh, right? Immunity has become yeah. such a mainstay now that you know, earlier it was, we, we've always been reactive for our health. We, we've always been reactive. And now it's like exponentially proactive. So like Shashi is saying, we were using sanitizers 15 minutes, right? So hygiene and then immunity. And so much so that every single thing linked to immunity has seen a spike. And what we started seeing in conversations was whether it's the food we eat which is which means you know the whole shift towards better fresher foods because ultimately it should lead to a better immunity whether it's fitness not just for adults but also for kids because if we are fit again it leads to better immunity whether it's immunity boosting medicines even homeopathic medicines uh, herbs uh, you know things such as giloy i think just that the share of voice of just those terms have gone up like massively right these terms were never spoken about uh, in this degree and and the and the biggest spike has uh, been home based uh, concoctions so super interesting but massive spike in you know home based kadas and concoctions just to uh, increase immunity um, so uh, again my question here is you know that with all of this so chavan prash is something we all know and we've all had right and uh, some of our grandparents used to have it every single day, like it was a daily use case, right? But our generation, I think, did not live up to that. And now it's come back. It's come back in a big way. But but what is, what is your take on it? Like one, so granted, the category has expanded, multi, multi-fold. It's here to stay. We, it's, it's super interesting. Even for infants, moms are asking questions to how to build immunity for like even my two-month-old, right? Who's only like kind of breastfed. 
so how are you looking at this category and are there any other ways like do you think this new consumer and this need for immunity is different is chavan prash is of course there but what what beyond that and how how, how do we ensure that uh, you know we are able to communicate that message for this new age consumer yeah so you know i think this is the first time when people felt that you know uh, the virus is this close to us you know it's so close to us that it might come and attack us at any point of time and basically that's how people started washing their hands uh, sanitizing their hands uh, uh, very often and you know keeping the surroundings very very clean with the uh, various kind of disinfectants and then you know uh, so you saw that you know various kind of disinfectants like surface cleaners the surface wipes uh the toilet cleaners the sales for all these uh, products started growing then uh, uh something which is you know uh, like hand sanitizers it started uh, doing pretty well soap started doing well so these are the all external things right for uh the external security that you know if virus comes close to us we will be able to stay away from virus second was that you know uh, uh ingesting uh, something like uh, uh, immunity boosting products you know So the world had not heard of this uh, uh, this herb called uh, giloy, for example. You know, the giloy came into uh, a big conversation, and uh, uh, people uh, started talking about giloy. Uh, various formats of giloy came into uh, 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 this thing uh, came into circulation. Various companies started manufacturing it. People started advertising it. Then products like ashwagandha came into uh, discussion. Uh, thereafter, you know, uh, there was a, a a huge mystery uh, came out with this advisory for people which said that you know we should have a kadha and we should have a champrash uh, for immunity building that really uh, you know gave confidence to people that you know uh, uh, that uh, apart from these companies talking about these words this government also talking about it and one saw that you know there's a uh, uh, these kind of things this uh, uh, these kind of things we all knew that you know the ancient wisdom talked about it that champrash is good for you for your Uh, well-being and immunity, like you said, that older people used to uh, do it, but now this extended to every person in the family. So apart from the older folks in the in the family, uh, uh, housewife needed it, kids needed it, the father of the house needed it, even everybody around uh, you uh, needed uh, a product like John Prash for uh, keeping you immune. And then you know products like Kada. You know one one knew about products like Kada, for example. You know that if you Have if you're sick, you have kada. It will uh, do good to you. But as a proactive measure, these kind of things uh, started getting consumed. You know, so although uh, there are not very big numbers to talk about uh, uh, these products like uh, like kada and giloy and sugar and that etc. But these uh, became a part of the conversation. You know, uh, apart from chon prash, obviously, which uh, uh, has been known uh, for uh, centuries, for ages, uh, uh, came into forefront and. we were start consuming it in a much more in a more much more structured manner i would say you know much more uh, religious manner as so to say but but all these other products also came into fore thanks to or i, I would like to say use this word thanks to uh, this uh, virus but you know these things were always important it's not that you know these things are going to uh, i mean uh, this thing keep you uh, uh, keep the virus away from you but even in a regular day to day life you know if your health and hygiene is taken care of and uh, if you have these products they basically they good to you so this this uh, fact got established uh, in a way people understood the reason and uh, they started using it so uh, that's my take on this sure yeah i think we can um, you know later talk about what are um, any any sort of new product uh, launches or innovations planned like what if dabar comes up with you know a kada packet or but i i, I yeah we do we do have we okay. yeah we did launch we did launch uh, uh, various immunity building products and uh, kada was also one of them and sure. uh, the some products were already they were already existed in the system but you know they were now now got advertised so as to say and uh, we started advertising it we increased the distribution we reached out uh, these products out to people people started searching for these products on uh, uh, platforms like amazon start sending it through uh, online uh, portals we had a very good growth in online so uh, so i mean uh, people went reached out to uh, reached out looking for these products you know that's what it did sure 
um, so um, uh, Naveen, uh, uh, you know, just coming to the entire um, uh, personal care and beauty at home uh, as a category, uh, it's kind of mixed, right? Because certain things, uh, when we look at sort of beauty and personal care, such as hair removal, uh, we saw that that took a massive jump because it's a need, it's an essential, right? Whether we are home or that's just how we are conditioned. So that that became like a big problem to solve, right? That how to do it at home. Uh, but then in terms of specific beauty and makeup products, um, as well as, uh, uh, so hair care, skin care is one, but beauty makeup. For beauty makeup, given that we're not going out and in this new age of looking beautiful <laughs> or at least feeling beautiful, right, on, on video, like how has that category uh, changed? So from our perspective, from a conversations perspective, we've not seen a spike in beauty sort of products per se. What we have seen a spike is in a lot of DIY, like I said, like a lot of uh, like, you know, things such as homemade facials or CTMs because people have more time at hand. And, uh, you know, that so that is something that we're seeing. It's amazing to see how aloe vera just as one ingredient has gone up and shot up, right? So we're seeing that interesting uh, sort of uh, trends. But what I'm very curious about is with uh, how, how has the sort of makeup and beauty from your perspective changed? What are the trends that you're seeing there? Right. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be on this panel and also congratulations to Exchange for Media to bring up a topic like this. I think it is very relevant and very important, a uh, lot of discussions around it and happy to be part of this discussion here. Uh, you know, the, the key thing which COVID has done to the consumer is a fear and which is a real fear. You know, it is there. You know, the fact is that everyone wants to be safe and it has done few things to certain categories. At Oriflame, we do have businesses which are in personal care category. We do have businesses which are skincare category. And then we also call colors what you said around makeup. So even in these three segments, and we also have some products in the wellness category. And uh, there has been a shift uh, uh, very definitely. And we have seen, and like many other companies and data, uh, there uh, very surely reflects this, that uh, soap and hand washing liquid hand soap have really, really gone up. Okay. But along with it, you know, as much as the consumer is fearful, they also now got caught up with this thing. Uh, what Shashi mentioned is that, am I doing it right? Or am I doing it too much of it? And therefore they want someone to advise them, you know? So when you wash your soap, a hand with soap very frequently, it leads, leads to drying of your hands. And therefore we've also seen that the hand lotions have also gone up. So people are using hand cream because they don't want their hands to be, to be dry. Same goes for sanitizers. You know, if you're going to use it rather very frequently, it's going to lead your hands to dry up. And therefore uh, the conversations are important. Education is important. We in direct selling are a little bit more blessed. We can reach to our brand partners so we put a fair amount of emphasis on, on what is correct. And therefore, we always try and bundle these products together. When you are talking of uh, personal hygiene, you know, it is your hand sanitizer. And that's important when you step out. But when you are at home, you have a soap and you need to have a hand lotion. So those are the things which surely and definitely have seen a fair amount of spike for the industry. And we are no exception. Uh, Skin care is something very interesting. Uh, as much as uh, do-it-yourself products have uh, taken a greater uh, share of the pie, uh, and we do have certain products largely in the facial kits, and not new to us. This is not a new launch. It has been there, but we have seen the demand for that gone up. And uh, we understand that because when you are at home, uh, those who are even going to the beauty parlor, they're hesitant to do that. So therefore, our brand partners could sell it to more, more consumers. However, uh, I would say one, one thing which we are pleasantly surprised is in skincare category, for many, many women, the, the regimen of a good skin is important. And they do take care of it. So, you know, they would clean, stone, moisturize. 
and uh, the results on those and if you want to have good skin you need to go through the regimen and products which are part of the regimen we have actually seen pretty much not a big decline actually there is a shift from a premium brand to a little bit more say affordable so as to say but overall uh, we are still i have seen that skin care has been able to hold stronger than what people think and i am sure data around it uh, can tell us that but our experience is that women they they, they do for the right reason uh, pay right importance to the skin it is precious and be it at home or out you know just the regimen is important and women do end up using these products the category which has been severely impacted is that of makeup and obviously if you're not stepping out uh, you don't need makeup so as to say you know there are certain products which are which are meant to enhance beauty and looks when you step out and those are the uh, products where we have seen and i think the whole industry has seen a fair amount of dip uh, with the only exception is eyes you know lips has taken a big beating uh, to an large extent phase 2 but eyes has not actually eye products have uh, become even more stronger and uh, whenever whenever women are stepping out they still like to uh, do their eyes so those are the shifts which we have seen uh, in the categories but the bigger thing is that consumer still wants more information and also the consumer has become far far more aware today they are not going to buy a product without reading the label you know it is no more a hand sanitizer most consumers and thanks to lot of good education done by marketers and to a large extent by the government are going to pick up a product which is 70% alcohol because they know they are wanting to protect themselves from covid and those are the things uh, which are which are which is in a way is very good because then brands which are really presenting the product with the right kind of claims and benefit uh, gain and then of course as we heard there are 300 new brands being launched and how many of them have data of uh, of performance of them it's little bit of a question mark so the consumer is more aware which is a good thing consumer still seeks more information and we continue to do that and i think all marketers uh, it is our responsibility uh, to share that so those are my my top line uh, you know views on this and how we are seeing a shift in in our business our wellness products uh, as we spoke about immunity and rajiv uh, mentioned about how the immunity products have uh, uh, seen a new new rise it's same for us you know we have a small range uh, we sell a protein powder we have antioxidant we sell omega and you know people just want to in this era be even more like better safe than sorry you know these products have always been good you know if you are on these products you always will be healthier but if you are not on these products now people want to just be even more uh, cautious about it it like i think they believe somewhere at the back of their head it's some kind of an insurance you know ah, let me spend that money i think i will be better off i will not fall sick so those are some important shifts which we have seen and uh, i do believe it will continue in the same direction till this really you know the covid era is there and i truly hope and pray hard this gets over quicker than uh, than not yeah you're you're absolutely uh, right uh, navin i think the things which are a part of our regimen you know have stayed on uh, and lips of course because of the mask uh, i'm it's very interesting to hear uh, that you're saying so eyes uh, you know uh, eye products have not seen any impact and uh, that just goes to say it's sort of the biggest beating on lips is due to masks right otherwise absolutely you are so correct you know meaning you used to looking at yourself a certain way and if you're used to putting wearing a lipstick every day then ideally you should be doing it but then it's the mask which uh, uh, you know because we are always masked up and uh, like you rightly said let's hope this is over soon uh, uh, that there's no end date there's no expiry date to this which is the biggest uh, uh, sure. right uh, what we all are facing um so i I've, i've taken some points right i'll come back and ask i'm very very excited to ask about product innovations and what is sort of the most breakthrough innovations that you guys are thinking about uh, uh, 
uh, in these categories. But before that, uh, Swati um, would love to understand from you. Uh, so Swati uh, runs a community called Bangalore Women Power, um, which uh, she started when she moved to Bangalore because of a personal pain point of not knowing anyone and uh, you know networking with women around her. She has a professional career before that, but then uh, this is how our group started. Today it's uh, a thriving group of over 100k women with uh, uh, the, uh, every post. So we measure something called activity rate and every post in Swati's community on an average has uh, 100 comments, which is this is all organic, right? So it's, it's super engaged. Uh, uh, so thank you, Swati, first of all, for creating such such a powerful, impactful community. Um, and um, I, I want to understand, Swati, so um, you started the community because of a pain point, but who are these women? Why why do they choose to join your community? Just for all of us to understand better. So, um, so I started, like you said, I started this community because I myself was seeking help. Okay, because I was new to the town and it was I was finding it very difficult. Uh, let me just take a small example, like searching for a house in the right area was the biggest challenge that I faced. The first problem uh, statement that I had. And I was actually seeking out for some community wherein I can get some help, but which I couldn't found it, find it here. And that's the reason I thought, okay, why not I start? And uh, when I started this community, I started with a small WhatsApp group wherein, you know, uh, we, I just, uh, you know, posted on Facebook saying that I am planning to start a community, a group of women wherein we can help and support each other and we can network uh, with each other because I really wanted to socialize. So socializing was one thing that was very important for me because for everything you need help. So when I posted this, I saw, I was zapped to see that, you know, there were like more, more than 600 comments on the post. And I realized, oh my God, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of women who are actually seeking out a lot of uh, opportunities for themselves, a lot of help and support for themselves. So I was like, okay, let me just uh, leverage this. And, you know, we started with a small WhatsApp group. Okay, wherein we started helping each other, we started building trust in each other and the kind of response that we were getting from women was fantastic and that's the reason we came on Facebook. And within a span of two and a half years, we are like more than one lakh women community and the engagement, if you see, it's almost like 600% and out of this 90 at the moment, today we are like 90% active members in the group. So all uh, these women are somebody who's, uh, who's looking for, you know, support, who's looking for some recommendation. It could be a brand recommendations, like, uh, like we are talking about, uh, you know, the COVID situation. So which product should I use? Which shouldn't I use? And there's a lot of debate that happens. So it's all organic and it's actually real time discussions that happen. So that's the best part about any group. Uh, also, I would say that these are the groups who have been invited by the other members of the group. So there's always that humanization. That's always that it's all the referral thing that happens. And also there are a lot of people who actually are looking out for uh, such groups wherein, you know, they are uh, seeking some kind of help and they proactively join such groups because they know the power of communities. Uh, and the most important part is whenever we have anybody in the group, we do make sure that, you know, all these profiles are genuine. And when people knew that, you know, uh, the profiles are being scrutinized because, or, I mean, if you see on Facebook, there are a lot of face, uh, fake profiles and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, invalid uh, profiles that ca comes in. But we make sure that we scrutinize each profile and we build that trust in a way that, uh, today we are more like a family. So the kind of, uh, you know, response that we get in the group, if you ask any kind of help, uh, may it be like, uh, let me just give you a small uh, example wherein a lady in the US, uh, she was, uh, she, her parents were in Vijayawada and, you know, initially she used to stay in Bangalore. So she was quite worried that both of her parents were uh, COVID positive and, you know, they were not finding hospitals. She just went it out and posted in BWP that I'm seeking help. And, you know, uh, there was another lady who was following the post and she, she arranged the entire help in Vijayawada. I mean, that was the, that's the power. And she was so happy that, you know, being far, it made it closer for her. So it's, it's a small world we say, but here it's proved. 
right so that that's the uh, that's the whole game of uh, the community wherein it's more like a family you you ask for anything you get it it's like google i mean and, and everything is real time demographically if you ask me 100% of women definitely but they are in the age group of 25 to 45 where, where 70% are uh, you know mothers and they are asking for some parenting help it could be uh, it, it could be anything that uh, you know probably in the in the entire lockdown we had been going through a lot of stress so there were people who were looking out for some fun and entertainment so we did a lot of activities within the group and there's a lot of learning opportunities like our do it right uh, campaign which was uh, there which was done by that all that was a fantastic campaign which wherein we were educating people on you know how to use it all so likewise it is not only in terms of brands but it's also in terms of learnings wherein you know if there were uh, there are a lot of talent which is available within the community and we called all of these talents and we have told uh, we have asked them to uh, take up some sessions some free sessions wherein a lot of uh, people get a lot of entertainment as well as education and you know it's it's like a perk for them sitting at home so this is how uh, we are actually uh, trying to build this community in a way that you know the uh, you, you you don't have to you know look outside for any kind of help if you have a question come to the community and you know your problem is solved so that that's so, how also, the, also yeah. so i remember swati so we were talking yesterday and i was asking her right um, i said what did you feel after covid what changed in your community right cuz so many things so we're talking about what changed for consumers you know how have we as brands reacted on it and then what changed in the community and uh, uh you know it's interesting when she said that you know hundreds of people just started joining every day like she was telling me her welcome posts daily had 3 400 member tags to just uh, uh, sort of you know welcome new members and it's interesting people were searching and joining right just because that need to get support was was so much higher and then also conversations spiked right so um that's very uh, it was very interesting to hear that and she was taking me through some of the examples so i think specifically for that all um, it would be good to talk about it right because uh, so um, you've done about three campaigns right that all and uh, you were sharing with me pre covid and post covid so i think two were launches just just tell us how was that experience how did the members in the community react to it and the reason would be good for us to hear is because these are organic communities True. so how do they how do they react to brand communication right like how how is the engagement and why why have you of course it's 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 uh, you know for 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 admins it's it's great because it is some source of sustainability but uh, you know then why have sort of you continued and the member feedback on all the three campaigns so uh, the very first campaign when there was this product launch of uh, detol disinfectant spray okay so i uh, when we started promoting in the group uh, there was a very good response that there's something new that has come up in the market and people were really excited but there were some set of people who had this you know there were some backlashes which did happen wherein people say oh it's chemical based you shouldn't be using it how can you promote such products i mean that kind of backlash was there and it was a little difficult when obviously the change of uh, management is little difficult so that was uh, the change that we were bringing in the mindset of people so uh, we did say that okay do try and you know then you will you should be sharing your experience uh, you know rather than putting up on the post like this but obviously all feedback should be welcomed negative or positive uh, but later when uh, we did the uh, when we did the second uh, post uh, that was again we we redid the campaign all together again and that was when people were like oh my god i'm actually not getting this product when i'm it's like out of stock the unavailability of the product was at uh, the top of the town and you know uh, so people felt the importance of this product because they felt it was useful it was very very useful uh it's not a, not only about uh, the disinfectant spray it is all the detol products that it, that had come uh, you know in terms of sanitizers uh, like uh, shashi said that you know yes people did use it uh, you know wrong i mean and you know there were some kind of 
uh, reactions that did happen but you know campaigns like do it right really helped uh, in educating uh, people it's not i really liked uh, the way and people also loved the way that all these campaigns were done because it's not about just promoting a product it's about educating about the product which was very very important uh, usually what happens is when you get a product in the market and uh, like navin sir said everything is written behind the uh, the product but not everybody reads it so you know that and and sometimes what happens is you know uh, we say action speaks louder than words Oh. Hello. Sorry, I think we lost her. Maybe she'll join back. I thought it was my internet. Yeah, I think, I think you're still so so talking about using the product. Then probably you understood where. Well. Sorry, I had lost you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we lost you, and now you're back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were worried about Zoom. <laughs> But she started, right, Chaji? Yeah. Sorry, we we lost you. yeah she was talking about like uh, it's actually very interesting i'll just take one thing from that that the do it right you know it's like what swati said a it's educating second it's leading with insights what was the insight what was the problem people were not doing it right people were not doing it right because of the fear and because of that there was a reaction or there was a negative impact on the skin or whatever so that all going in with do it right and uh, it's very interesting navin that in the in the imagery we actually showed the backpack of that all <laughs> that do it right these are the four cases in which you should use that all and uh, uh, this is the skin care regime that you should follow after every sanitizer use you must use a, uh, a a moisturizer just moisturize your skin and i think it's very sort of bang on right that when you talk about the problems that are top of the mind of the consumer they they appreciate they understand they become evangelists they go all out they understand that the brand cares about what yes. you know what we care about and i think that's one other interesting thing that swati was saying was a lot of recommendations uh, around uh, oriflame people just asking who are looking for employment with oriflame has gone up in our community because again we're all at home and a lot of people have lost jobs so that was uh, very interesting at least for me to hear because there's a lot of reviews that get posted in her community about local services etc but also for people so people are asking is it okay that if i join uh, uh you know uh, or flame so it's it's um, uh, one i think uh, one, in, in yeah. times like this when there are job losses and uh, you know direct selling does provide an opportunity for everyone to make an additional income uh we have surely and definitely in the direct selling industry uh, seen a spike and also in our business and oriflame business uh, in direct selling is still little unique because we are predominantly a business with large number of women and therefore groups like what swati does you know they need they need assurance that am i doing something right and the fact is that uh, to join and not employment like i am employed with oriflame i am on a salary on a role but these are business women they 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 set up their own own businesses without any investment and then build from there but they need reassurance and there is no joining fee or anything you know it doesn't take money to to join but i think they need assurance that are they doing the right thing you know and uh, that's where uh, the the magic really happens and we have definitely seen uh, many many women and men for that matter join the oriflame business uh, to to ensure that they have uh, new additional income so that is exactly right and i i can completely correlate with it you know in in situations like this uh, all the time always every penny is important but in these times it's even more so people are looking for additional incomes and we have seen uh, seen seen that go up yeah so uh, i want to ask this question to all uh, you know the panelists rajiv shashi and navin that now when the consumer who used to step offline is inside the house right and whether we say things have opened up we're still all in i mean i'm at home i think rajiv you're in office but i'm at home i think shashi is at home so it's still like you know in a in a some sort of a lockdown and whether it's new york or europe which has gone again in lockdown but that's where we are um uh, in terms of getting access or listening to the consumer and you know what are they caring about because we we just spoke about the new product launches 
whether it's sanitizers, fruit and vegetable spray, household cleaning product, or a Corona oven, right? So one of my uh, uh, founder friends has, you know, we, we bought a Corona oven when I was in Delhi a few months back, right? It was a pain, it was big. So I love the product, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, there's innovations, right? And he had some insight and he launched that. So again, in this new era, which is here to stay for some time, where are we going or where are you guys uh, sort of, uh, you know, looking to go and engage with consumers as well as get an insight? Uh, so I think uh, <clears throat> if I go first, so, you know, we are actually hearing more than ever, uh, you know, because I think uh, uh, somewhere, uh, you know, like the, the changes that have happened in the last eight months is unprecedented, you know, like um, if I just give a very top line numbers, uh, people, and I'm talking about, for example, a hand wash category, right? Which is, which is, uh, a one tier above soap, right? Because of course, and I'm talking pan India. So the penetration, there are like, uh, the penetration has gone two X. So there are double number of people who are using a product for the very first time in their lives. Right. And this is just one example. And if you look at, for example, all the, the gentlemen who spoke about all the different categories, I think we or the entire immunity building or immunity or in the prevention space have seen many new people come, you know, many full people come into the picture and therefore the insights are also changing. I mean, okay. In not insight, but you know, the, the pain points, the, the use cases, the, what is there in their mind at the moment that they are kind of, you know, changing. For example, I remember, uh, two, two, three months back when we looked into the data with you, Tamanna, I, I basically, we saw that the, uh, because there has been too much uh, education around hand hygiene. Now the uh, focus was shifted to shifting to surface protection. How do I, you know, uh, sanitize the uh, Amazon boxes as uh, that comes to my house? How do I do this? How do I do that? So therefore, and even in uh, surface protection, what are the top surfaces? There are certain surfaces that you can clean. For example, you know, like any hard surface, but what do you do with the couch? What do you do with the rug? You know, so soft surfaces, therefore, you know, then, then we looked at, looked into it. So I'm sure, you know, in the next six, eight months, we need to constantly keep our eyes and ears open. We may not know what the new use case comes because everything is in beta at the moment. And of course, uh, we at least very firmly believe that we need to keep our mindset so open and not really, uh, you know, base our facts on what we've seen in the past six months. We, these things are changing every day. So I think just be open and agility is most important to keep uh, things open and clearly uh, uh, insight, which is, uh, you know, at a grassroot level, for example, right. What people do talk to amongst each other, like, you know, what Swati was telling about the, the entire community of people coming together to sort of, you know, help uh, such a person in need. I mean, those are the places where people talk their hearts out. Right. And that's the right time to right think to near. Okay. This is what they're wanting. Because I can do a, a, a dipstick with sort of, you know, syndicated research. People know that, you know, I'm here to sort of fill a question. I'm going to get paid at the end of the session. They've, they've been doing it for the last 10 years. But this is something that I think the, the people are real. The insights are real. And the signals that you can get, get cannot be more real. Yeah. And I just want to highlight this because I think with Shashi and Rekit now, we, there is some... Like, you know, we, we've been working together, but one thing is insights, but this lightning speed at which uh, I think you've acted, Shashi, is also commendable. So really, like like you rightly, I know that because on a Sunday, you know, seeing an insight in 24 hours, going out to hundreds of communities with this message that we care and please do it right and take care of yourself. So, I mean, it's insight, but making it actionable. So, yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear from, uh, you know, Rajiv and Naveen also that any other channels that you are tapping into digitally or just to get insights uh, onto consumers. Yeah, you know, so uh, just to add to what, sorry, Naveen, you're talking. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay. After you. So, so you know, uh, like just to add to what uh, uh, Sai was saying that, uh, so Shekhar was saying that, you know, uh, it's a beta phase, you know, and uh, Last six months, we saw a severe lockdown and from severe lockdown to unlock one, two, three, four, and now unlock five, people are going out now. So first phase, we saw that, you know, complete lockdown, people are inside their homes, uh, experimenting with uh, all the products which are available at their home at that uh, point of time. Then to opening up, you know, people went out, started going out gradually, they started uh, interacting with others and started to see how uh, things are going to shape up. 
once the once the complete unlock happens you know once everybody is out uh, once all of you are in office you know uh, then what will happen is that you know you will learn a few more things for example you know one learns that you know you don't need to sanitize your hands uh, uh, so often probably you know rather than that washing your hands is much more much more better much more safer rather uh, than sanitizing your hands so much so many times and taking care of yourself staying away from each other uh, maintaining a distance so uh, as we go along uh, this this learning is going to be uh, uh, further uh, accentuated uh, this virus is not going to go away for another 2 years that's what they say and uh, another 6 months from now when we complete one complete year you would have seen that you know the trend of products would have changed completely you know some products would start seeing a uh, tapering off uh, uh, in their sales for example i i can uh, predict that you know uh, as a product like sanitizer i would see that you know the, the 300 products which have been launched you know uh, will disappear the, the very few will remain and the very few will survive you know so in the month of march april i remember anybody with a bottle of uh, ethyl alcohol was manufacturing uh, uh, hand sanitizers you know so all that will uh, change uh, so all the uh, smaller players people who could not uh, uh, make a uh, dent into the market who could not distribute or people who are not able to distribute the products properly who don't have a supply chain uh, ready these products will gradually disappear and uh, uh, people once they go out they become braver and they start experimenting with new formats and probably new things will emerge you know so one has to keep uh, eyes and ears open for the new opportunities which exist in the market probably going out is a new normal now and that this going out a uh, new normal uh, you will have to look at some other uh, category of products uh, you know which are which are going to be of uh, uh, use to people for example you know uh, open air parties if you do suppose for example the people have been totally away from parties in last 6 uh, uh, to 8 months so you know how, how, how can you make the party safer so those kind of products uh, can see uh, uh, a search and and many more uh, to go you know when you travel outside to go what kind of production you should use and how do you protect yourself from the virus because virus is going to be there i mean all said and done Uh, the effect is going to go down, but you know we're talking about second wave and the third wave, and uh, so one has to be very very careful uh, about the virus, and and this will lead to a new learning and new products coming to the market. Right, I'm so sorry to be the bearer of the bad news that we're running short of time, so we'll quickly go to uh, the question answers that we have. First of all, thank you to all the speakers. and of course our presenting partner conversite i'll just uh, quickly go over to some of the questions that uh, we have been uh, receiving so uh, first question is for swati swati uh, someone asked that if i was a personal care brand which community should i focus um yes uh, which community should i uh, focus to find relevant conversations what is the approximate size of these communities in india it, is it a significant number uh so so when you choose a community first uh so there are a lot of good communities that are already available at, in on facebook so there are some communities which are specifically on health uh you know related communities so one of those would be these kind of communities where you know people talk more about health and conversations around it uh groups like you know uh, ours okay where we are talking about everything and has good engagement so whenever you look for any kind of community just make sure that you know how's the engagement how are people reacting within the communities all these are very very important before choosing a community and when you talk about size size is not that important how much is the quality because there are some groups which are small in numbers but the engagement is very very high so Please. that's where you get more relevant answers uh, or you know conversations around your uh, product so right. uh, just not go on the size but yes quality is very very important uh, understand uh, more on the insights so you know we get all these insights from the uh, from facebook itself and from conversite wherein uh, based on the insights you can choose your uh, right. community perfect perfect yeah, i would I, request on sorry yeah, i just want to add a point here on the sure. size of communities and this is for everyone so uh, in facebook global community summit which just was held two weeks back there's 1.8 billion people now across the world mm-hmm. actively engaging in communities 
course the pandemic has had a huge impact right so pretty much all of the engagement on facebook is coming from groups there's uh, on conversite specifically there's 5000 communities with close to 90 million members and for any sort of personal care uh, uh, you know conversation hygiene conversation whether it's parenting or it's a local community like swatis there's tons of communities like how swatis community there's communities like pula which is the largest community mm-hmm. in pune right so and as swati said there's the numbers as well as there's there's the total number of members but engagement is what's really important and the most critical thing in all of this is what are we communicating we have to marry the pain point with our message and that's why it's it's really purpose led marketing because if that's not there uh, then uh, you know the, the consumers are not engaged if they are not engaged the admin is not happy because it's not it's, it's an organic forum so what's very important is understanding what consumers care about and then going and educating uh, them absolutely uh, next question is for you shashi shekhar um, this says that should a social media strategy or a digital strategy include community marketing as a separate budget how are brands leveraging community meeting in their brand campaigns what is the size of budgets parked for the sale if you can just compress all the questions into one answer your microphones off i think it's two minutes before the com- the meeting ends so yes. very quickly uh, definitely so when we say social i don't see a difference between social and community because it's about creating conversations with with your audience right they could be on facebook they could be on twitter they could be on instagram they could be on facebook groups and when you talk to them on facebook groups you call it community so yes in that way definitely it should be a part of it now how do you start doing is always start small create some impact prove a point then scale it up uh, don't put all the eggs in the basket don't try to sort of you know do a, lo- a bigger campaign but do a specific campaign but very critically measure it because uh, the the platforms helps you measure also so That's put it put kpis measure it if you if you see it is green go back and put more money and slowly scale it up but not yeah. necessarily do it together but very critical to have it have it as a mix in the overall digital uh, marketing budgets yes right. we we'll quickly take a question for rajiv to uh, so the question says uh, categories like sanitizers hand wash immunity boosters uh, how well can a community marketing help in creating a hype reach and also engagement is there a specific strategy that brands follow uh, or are there any suggestions on that so so there are two things in this you know one is that uh, this this community uh, these communities have a, a limited uh, reach in, in the sense that uh, it has limited reach but however the most important thing is that most of the insights come from these uh, communities and very very uh, focused and uh, uh, these are basically uh, these are very good for insight generation but ultimately you have to reach out to the entire mass of the community right. Uh, right. so so you know you have to look at both you have to uh, maintain a balance between the two uh, one is that this small community you have to focus you have to keep everybody on your side because these people are ultimately going to be don't going to become your brand ambassadors mm-hmm. in the long run and then talk to the mass uh, the 1.3 billion people of this country as a whole right. tamanna i will quickly take one more question for you uh, this says that can you share some practical uh, use cases of the insights generated in the personal care category from conversations by brands that you're working with so yeah i think we have a minute uh, yes. but <laughs> uh, so um, i i can i can quickly take a example for wheat shashi sure. if that's okay right i can just take an example for that that when we sure. say that hair removal and hair removal at home became uh, a need what did we see so two things specifically came out one uh, consumers don't know how to do it at home right so how to do effective hair removal at home and the second was specific myths around skin darkening because uh, you know there are myths that if we use uh, any hair removal uh, creams then there might be skin darkening and as we all know i think just recently uh, you know just today i think fair and lovely name has been changed but fairness is a big thing in our country right and skin darkening is something that we don't uh, so those are the two insights that came out after looking at all the data so we then utilize those insights went into the communities with exactly solving those two problems how to do it how to use wax strips at home 
uh, and and today the adoption of it is massive and it's it's here to stay now because they are cheaper more convenient more hygiene right with this uh, more hygienic with the same sort of efficacy and the second uh, thing which was uh, sort of myth uh, around skin darkening which was happening again due to incorrect usage so which is uh, so for which wheat has gone out with you know again massive initiatives around bringing in dermatologists experts and also beauty influencers to talk to consumers on how to use it for the right amount of time mm -hmm. not leading to so both of these myth busting um, myth busting and adoption have uh, worked very well but coming from that core insight if we didn't know the insight we would have gone and said 10 different things right we just great and use it as a product um, and i think just to just to add add to that uh, taman another thing was so you know because you take the insight and you also look at you know what are the other una stuff that you have with your existing consumers for example every category has got fence sitters right people who are mm -hmm. unsure unsure whether to try or not try covid because you know it shut salon doors a lot of people were so as to say they had to try it because there was no other option right and our data actually you know we already have a, so a, a trial to repeat is really great for products like these so you know once people try it the repeat rate is higher so clearly that made up a made us uh, you know a strategy even uh, you know a focus that there are people who will be trying it for the first time and uh, the community actually showed what are the top concerns so you we married with the both and actually came out with a campaign which could talk to their people talk to the fence sitters answering some of the questions that may or they might already have in their mind so clearly yeah. so that's the way to kind of you know scale it up and move forward one penultimate question for navin before we close this session uh, navin if you can uh, help us understand you know what kind of content works uh, for communities uh, because you work with so many communities so is it the visual content or is it just any other form of written content what is the kind of uh, content that works best for your messaging in communities i think for us the the learning has been that uh, when you are with them now you are not there physically with them so we have had huge amount of success with facebook lives or the teams meeting so it is always they want to listen to you they want to see you even if it is digitally they want to be in conversations with you and i must say if there is one thing which is changed for for us and i think probably i speak for many brands mm -hmm. i think it is the importance of the money is one has put behind the the, the digital marketing and we have also disproportionately increased that this year we are seeing some very positive results and uh, we continue to do that in fact this year uh, oriflame in india is celebrating 25 years and on 14th of december we shall do a mega digi digital event which goes pan india and I, we could have never imagined things like this before the covid time but there is so much of effort which we are putting in there and we i feel so so energized about it and not only this big event all small events which we are doing with our uh, brand partners they have been very well appreciated they still want to meet you you know it is just like okay if not physical in the meeting i want to still see you maybe digitally great great thank you so much a conversation like that on such a pressing topic can go on forever we can take the conversation offline on our social handles i would again want to thank all our speakers for being part of this amazing webinar thank you tamanna for the moderating the amazing session and lastly thanks to our presenting partners conversite uh, we can take this conversation ahead from here on our social handles thank you so much for being here thank you thank you everyone Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone.